Welcome to APFC Positional Play, your ultimate guide to youth soccer coaching. If you're passionate about nurturing the next generation of soccer stars, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into a crucial topic for every youth soccer coach, fostering creativity in training sessions. Hi, I'm Bernat Franqueza, your guide on this journey to better coaching. Let's kick off. Have you ever found yourself running two simple drills, turning your players into mere executors of commands? Or perhaps you've tried to emulate the strategies of elite clubs, only to end up with drills that are too complex for your young players. If you answered yes to these questions, don't worry, you're not alone. But it's time to rethink our approach. Ask yourself, are my training sessions fostering creativity or stifling it? Am I preparing my players for the unpredictability of the game or just teaching them to follow set patterns? Am I giving them the freedom to explore and make mistakes? Creativity is crucial in soccer, especially for players between 6 and 12. This is the age where their minds are most malleable and open to new ideas and ways of thinking. One of the most common problems is the child's interpretation at this age. So how can we foster this creativity in our training sessions? Here are some tips. First, apply a global methodology that demands the player to perform different actions with or without the ball and in various roles. This provides a more comprehensive training experience. Let's break this down a bit. When we talk about a global methodology, we're talking about creating an environment that mimics the real game. Instead of isolating skills, we're integrating them. We're allowing our players to understand how and when to use these skills in the context of the game. Second, create a free structure that encourages movement and interaction, making the training sessions more engaging. A free structure is all about flexibility, it's about creating drills that allow players to move freely, make decisions and interact. It's about creating a dynamic environment where players can explore and learn. Third, ensure that your drills involve a high participation rate. The more they interact with the ball, the better their control will be. High participation is key. The more touches a player gets on the ball, the more comfortable they become with it. The more they're involved in the game, the more they learn. It's as simple as that. Fourth, design drills with an open context where they must construct their own solutions. Creativity is what separates good players from great ones. It's what makes a player unpredictable and hard to defend against. By creating an open context, we're encouraging our players to think outside the box to come up with their own solutions. And finally, include drills that require players to accelerate, decelerate, and make changes of direction, sense, and turns. These drills improve players' agility and adaptability. Agility is a crucial skill in soccer. The ability to change direction quickly, to accelerate and decelerate, can give a player a significant advantage on the field. And the best part is, agility can be improved with the right drills. Now let's observe three drills of the APFC course. Early stages, understand the player to develop the talent that enhance and improve the player's creativity. This drill is an evolution of the previous drill. We are going to add balls and we are going to follow the same rules. Players are not allowed to cross the walls or not to go out to the eliminated space. In this case, the defender must not catch the attacker, but regain or throw the ball out from the space. Once this happens, there is exchange of roles and the defender becomes the attacker. The only change concerning the rules is the vision of balls and how there is a role of a change. 
By adding balls, we are going to improve ball control and we are going to make it more difficult to players to perceive the ball. By making perception more complicated, our players will have to face pressure situations in which they will have to protect the ball in the first instant to find an escape rule later. To give more motivation to the players, instead of exchanging roles, we can do groups and count how many balls they can steal in a certain period of time. This is a way to motivate our defenders. Competition is always a good incentive to add to our drills. In this drill, we have a space with four small goals and several gates of three different colors. In this drill, we will compete in one-on-one -on -one situations through the space. The objective of this drill is for attacking player to cross three different colored gates before being able to shoot to the goal to try to score a goal. The only rule we are going to impose is to cross three different color gates. We are not going to put out a pre-established order of a color. And we will not accumulate the number of times we cross the gates. Every time that we lose the ball and recover it, we must restart. As we have seen in the previous ones, in this exercise will be very demanding in terms of ball control and control of deception movements, accelerations, turns and changes of direction. In addition, having to identify different colors and options will force the player to look for new free spaces, close and opportune, so he can dribble across the goal. The rules of the goal directly affect the perception signs they must identify which color is missing and among all the options which is the best option. In addition, many players within a space force them to observe so as not to crash with their own teammates. The variability in order of choose of goals and the fact of having four goals will enhance the player's creativity when choosing where to go and deceive the defender. In this reel, we have a delimited space with four goals. We play four teams, they face each other. In a situation of two against two with one ball, in a situation of two against one with the other ball. The goal for the blue team is to do four passes. After that, they can score a goal. The goal for the orange team is to get the ball back and go directly to score.
The only rule we propose is the limitation for the team that always initiates the attack, that of do 4 passes before being able to finish, and that players can finish in any of the 4 goals. In these reduced situations, our players will be forced to protect the ball from passing it for to a teammate, so they will have to make changes of direction, deceive the defender and perceive where the teammate is. Once the four passes are made, or when the defenders recover the ball, they must go to any goal. As we have said through this discourse, the variability at that time of finishing will enhance the creativity of our players. If we play one game, we will often find ourselves with a long distance actions and the fact of having to accumulate 4 passes will force the players to move, ask for the ball and help their teammates. Remember, as a coach, your role is to teach and inspire to ignite the spark of creativity that can turn a good player into a great one. That's all for today, coaches. Apply these insights in your next training session and let us know how it goes. And remember, the goal is not just to win games, but to develop well-rounded, creative players who love the beautiful game. Thanks for watching APFC Positional Play. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insights on youth soccer coaching. Until next time, keep playing, keep learning and keep inspiring.